My name is Noemi Giordano and I am a PhD student in bioengineering and medical surgical sciences. And today I will introduce the problem of home prevention of heart failure and a possible technological solution based on multi-source phonocardiography, which is the object of my PhD project. So in my opinion, every engineering project should be triggered by a problem in real life. So the first question here is why heart failure is a problem? So let numbers talk. Um, heart failure is a chronic disease which affects um, 600,000 people in Italy, only in Italy. And from the clinical point of view, it has a very high prevalence and a very high mortality. So if you have just a glimpse, you can think that um, one out of five people aged 40 today will be diagnosed with heart failure in the future. And the 50% of that people will die in five years from the early diagnosis. So this has also obvious economical and logistical consequences for the healthcare system. It was estimated that the annual expenditure of the Italian healthcare system related to our failure is around 2 billion euros. And the main cost is uh, related to the um, hospital admission, which lasts averagely five days and is estimated to cost around 10,000 euros per admission. So the hospital admission will be strongly reduced if the acute episode of heart, of heart failure could be prevented. Because uh, if the heart failure um, is uh, prevented uh, promptly, then um, the, um, the hospital admission could be avoided. And the problem is right now that there is no efficient and prompt technological solution available on the market for home prevention of acute episodes of heart failure. In the clinical context, the um, diagnosis of heart failure is made, is performed through either echocardiography, which is a, as an ultrasound imaging XM, and, um, or through blood, blood tests by the analysis of peptidic um, natriuretic peptides called anti-proBMP. So it is evident that both these exams are not suitable for home monitoring because they either need a killed technician or physician or blood test, which obviously cannot be brought home. On another side, multi-sensor platforms were tested for the prevention of acute episodes of heart failure, but typically uh, they rely on very non-specific parameters such as blood pressure or weight. And so, they have a very low reliability and a very low predictive power. So the aim of the methodology I am presenting today is to increase the predictive power of multi-sensor platforms, but without losing in usability in domiciliary applications. So this methodology is based on simultaneous recordings of electrocardiogram and phonocardiogram. Phonocardiogram uh, is a representation of, of the mechanical behavior of the art because uh, it consists of the electric recording of R sounds. R sounds are acoustic waves, mainly generated by the closing of R valves. In particular, in a common phonocardiogram, two main R sounds are present, and there are the first R sound, which represents the closure of atrioventricular valves, respectively the mitral and the tricuspid valves, and second R sounds, which is, um, is generated by the closure of semilunar valves, which are the aortic and the pulmonary valves. Both these events are triggered by an electrical stimulus, which is the ventricular depolarization, which can be seen in the corresponding electrocardiogram as a QRS complex. So our failure is a chronic condition where the electrical stimulus cannot be translated effectively to the mechanical action. So, the problem is not at the electrical level, but it is at the mechanical level. So the heart is not capable of um, pumping the blood into the system anymore as it should be. And so it cannot pro provide the right amount of oxygen and nutrients to the tissues. So concerning the signals, what we can see is that the electrocardiogram of a patient with, with heart failure is comparable to the one of an healthy subject. But concerning the mechanical activity, and so the phonocardiogram, the, um, the phonocard, the R sounds of an heart failure subject are delayed with respect to the ones of an healthy subject. So 
This methodology is based on this concept. If we are capable of measuring the latency of our sounds with respect to the corresponding uh, electrical uh, ventricular depolarization, then we are able to catch delays and to prevent our failure, monitor and prevent our failure. So the first step of the project was uh, the design and development of an algorithm for the estimation of the latency of our sounds. This takes as input uh, the electrocardiogram and the phonocardiogram and uh, filters them. And then the R wave peaks are detected within the electrocardiogram and used for the segmentation of our sounds within the phonocardiogram. This uh, occurs on the envelope of the phonocardiogram, which is calculated using the, sh the Shannon energy of the signal. And in particular, the main novelty of our algorithm with respect to uh, other state-of-the-art algorithms present, present in the literature um, is that we are capable of detecting not only the two main R sounds, but also the contribution of the single cardiac valves. And this is important because that allows for um, not only the detection of, um, of R failure, but also for its classification. So here, for example, in the signal, you can see um, the output um, of this phase, which is the time of closure of each cardiac valve. So in order, the mitral, the tricuspid, the aortic, and the pulmonary valves. Afterwards, for each um, component of each R sound, the latency with respect to the corresponding ventricular depolarization is computed. And the performances in the detection of R sound components uh, is as high as 99.2% uh, in terms of sensitivity and 100% in terms of specificity. And this outmatches other state-of-the-art algorithms. So to validate our algorithm, uh, we use the uh, um, a recording system made of um, one commercial recording system for biomedical signal, which is called Remotus, um, which we equip it with an active probe with electrodes to record a single channel electrocardiogram, and a microphone probe, which is based on a condenser microphone sensor and is shaped as a, a stethoscope head. In this way, we were capable of recording signals from 25 healthy subjects before the first. In the, in the first stage, we wanted to characterize the value, the, the typical value of the latencies over the healthy population. Of course, to get uh, proper characterization with a statistical significance, a larger population would be needed. But in this case, uh, this analysis would, was very important for us because the topic is very novel and no um, data was provided in the literature. So we wanted to know what to expect from an healthy subject and to understand what was uh, uh, at least temporary normality range for each cardiac valve. Afterwards, we use the same methodology to follow up a patient with uh, a history of cardiopathy and with past uh, um, acute episodes of heart failure and past uh, hospital admissions for heart failure. So here you can see um, the the variation of the latency values for each cardiac valve uh, over the time. And we, we could find a qualitative correlation between uh, the latency values which we measured and the, um, the actual health status of the patient. So uh, if you look, for example, at the blue line, which represents the mitral valve, you can see that in some moments, um, it, it is the most constant among the valves, but in some moments there was a tendency to increase which typically culminated with um, a hospital admission or a variation of the therapy, which took the value lower again. So the main problem um, of, the, of the recording system I presented up to now is that the recordings were performed at the patient domicile, but by an expert user, because the patient could not perform the recording, the recording itself. And why? because uh, it's not easy actually, because that recording system is not really suitable for a uh, home care application. The problem mainly resides in the positioning of the microphone. And the problem, we can say it's shoe-sided. On one side, you can see from these plots that um, recording the signal from different points of the chest uh, means obtaining um, signals with very different quality. And the best auscultation point is not fixed because it mainly depends on, on physical parameters, which are very, very 
uh, from subject to, to subject and they are unpredictable because for example they are related to the art position and orientation which are different from subject to subject so a skilled and experienced user is needed to obtain a signal with uh, of sufficient quality on the other side you can see that um, from if, if we apply our algorithm for the estimation of the latency of our sound components to signals recorded at different points of the chest, we obtain different results. And this further complicates the problem because um, in phonocardiography, uh, a standard positioning as, as exists in, uh, in electrocardiography, for example, in phonocardiography doesn't exist. So, this here is where multi-source phonocardiography comes in, because the idea here is um, to move the problem from the positioning phase to the processing phase. So instead of using a single microphone, we decided to use multiple microphones and then um, find the best, the best strategy to use these simultaneous recordings in the processing phase. So we tested some approaches and a first approach, which is uh, simple, but uh, effective actually uh, was signal selection. So um, we, chose, uh, we chose a quality metrics, like for example, signal to noise ratio, and then we selected the best signal according to the quality metrics. And we applied our algorithm for um, the estimation of the latencies on it. Another approach is the signal enhancement. So we used array signal processing techniques like beamforming to combine the original recordings into a single signal of enhanced quality. And uh, I did that uh, by means of, um, of um, the estimation of the delays among the signals, which we, which we did um, through maximization of the generalized cross-correlation function. And then I compensated those delays by using delay and some beamforming. A more sophisticated approach that we tested and that gave uh, promising results actually uh, was blind source separation. So um, this approach is based on the assumption that the recordings that the signals we can record over the subject of the over the subject chest are uh, mixtures of uncorrelated acoustic signals generated generated each by a different cardiac structure. So, for example, the left heart, the right heart, and a general other thoracic acoustic noise. So what happens in the torus is, actual, is actually um, matrix multiplication by a mixing matrix A, because uh, depending on the path that, uh, that each acoustic source uh, has to do to reach each microphone, it is um, filtered and amplified differently. And so the, the um, blind source separation approach uh, tries to estimate the unmixing matrix, which is the inverse of the mixing matrix, to recover the um, the acoustic sources as they were emitted from the cardiac source. So once we have this, um, this estimate of the, um, of the real acoustic signals, uh, we can have a uh, more reliable um, estimation of the time of occurrence of uh, the closing of each cardiac valve. Why? Because before we um, detected all the uh, cardiac valves con contributions uh, uh, on the same original recording. In this case, we can, um, uh, we can detect the mitral and the aortic contributions on the left heart signal and the tricuspid and pulmonary contribution on the right heart signal. So to conclude, um, I introduced the problems, the main problems related to the usage of phonocardiography uh, in the prevention of acute episodes of heart failure. And um, my research is going in the, into the, in the direction of using multi-source phonocardiography to solve the problem of the expert positioning of the microphone. Um, so at this stage, um, we are designing and realizing a system based on multiple microphones and completely suitable for domiciliary use. And at this stage, we are realizing a prototype, which hopefully will be ready in a few months. And in the further future, we hope to integrate our prototype in a telemedicine platform for the home monitoring of our failure patients. So I hope that my talk was of your interest and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Noemi, for your very interesting pre presentation. Now uh, it is turn to uh, read some questions for our question and answer session. Well, let's start. 
with the first one. Is the algorithm computationally expensive? Can it be implemented in an implantable device? Uh, well, an implantable is, device is not actually useful in this case because what we want to avoid is to uh, implant a device, actually. <laughs> so we want our device to be wearable so that uh, um, the patient can use it, for example, once a day before going to sleep for five minutes and it doesn't affect that much um, his, his own uh, life. Um, anyway, the, the algorithm is not computationally expensive and so it can for sure be integrated on a wearable device, which is not plugged, for example. Okay, thank you for your, for your answer. Let's move on. Uh, how much time does the complete process takes? Sorry? How much time does the complete process takes? Oh, very few seconds. Oh, okay. The complete process is very quick, like uh, a couple of seconds. Mm, interesting. But uh, the, the processing is not online during the recording. So um, we record the wall, um, the wall signal, like um, five minutes or 10 minutes of signals, and then we perform processing offline. Okay, in fact, now uh, there is a question probably related to processing. You anticipated the following question. Let's okay. say this way. Is the phonocardiography processing algorithm for latency estimation implemented in software or is a specific hardware employed apart from the employed commercial biomedical device? I think that it is referring to the device with microphones that you showed uh, in uh, one of the slides. Yes. Um, this one, you mean? Yeah. Okay, well, no, the, um, actually this recording system was made for a completely different biomedical signal, but was adapted for our purposes. But uh, anyway, the processing can, since it is offline, um, at this stage, it was completely software. Okay. Um, in the future, we, we can um, forecast that the, the, the um, processing will be done at firmware level, but it's, it's not a particular uh, constraint. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the, the more detailed answer. There is another one. Can you extract some features, for example, only the peaks before processing the data, or you need to record and store the entire signal? Uh, well, I don't. I don't really think it's needed uh, for this application. But for now, we prefer to record the signals because uh, we are still in a research phase, and so we we would like to have the signals to perform other activities on it uh, in the future. So for this particular algorithm, maybe only the detection could be, um, only the detected peaks could be uh, sent out, out as output, but uh, we prefer to record the signals so that we, we can have them for further research. Mm 